YouTube, are you confused about what your anatomical moneymaker is? It seems to me that the whole world might be a bit confused about exactly that question. <laughs> and with phrases about shaking it appearing in pop culture for almost a hundred years. That's right, a hundred years of confusion. Debuting with Charlie Patton's Shake It and Break It in 1929 and Book of White's Shake Em On Down in 1937, continuing all the way through the 20th century and into our now 21st century where we shake our money makers, like a salt shaker, a Polaroid picture, or like it's Saturday night. <laughs> it's no wonder we're so out of touch and why most of us are broke. <coughs> and if we ain't broke, well, well, we ain't rich either. The problem is we're developing the wrong anatomical assets. <laughs> so if it's not that which we shake, what is our anatomical moneymaker? If we consider shaking it as an analogy, we might think that your moneymaker must have something to do with using an asset to create movement, AKA working. <laughs> using your muscle and skill set that you've developed for an employer in exchange for money. We think that the better we get at our job, the more talented, the more efficient, the more productive, the more valuable we become. And the more years we do something, like that probably has something to do with it too. Like if you've been in an industry for a long time, you're probably thinking that that, that also helps with the money thing. But then we often realize that there's kind of like a cap. There's like this max. So then we think we need to go back to, I don't know, school or some kind of other training because certain jobs, you know, they pay higher than others. But at the end of the day, you'll be back on the ground floor, starting back at square one. The reality is that no matter what you're shaking, you'll earn the same bacon. <laughs> I learned this lesson hands-on. See, I started off doing hair, a job that I absolutely loved because I got to be creative, serve others, and have a great quality of life. I mean, I made my own schedule, my clients felt like my friends and family, and I made great money. I used that as the foundation uh, to pursue my passion for science. And while it wasn't my primary motivation, Part of me did think that the max for a scientist would probably be greater than that of a hairstylist. I mean, I had to go through years of learning and forking over big bucks to get that PhD. But in the end, truth be told, I'm not even kidding on this, I was more stressed and made less as a PhD in my first year of biotech than I did my first year apprenticing as a hairstylist. Say what? So, it occurred to me that it didn't matter if I was shaking a test tube or a color bottle, the max income I could make would probably be relatively about the same. Only with the latter, my ROI was significantly lower. I know, you're thinking, you're like, what? This is crazy, right? Like, it's a good thing, I love science. But anyway, back to the point. If it's not what you're shaking, what work you are physically doing that makes the biggest difference in how much money you make, what is it? I've learned that anatomically, your greatest money maker is your mouth. <laughs> that is the part of your body you use to speak, to communicate with words. Now, there are a lot more ways in which we communicate, but you see where I'm going with this. What most of us fail to realize is that the level at which you communicate directly impacts every single aspect of your life. From the quality of your relationships to where you work, the house you live in, the car you drive. Look around. This is hard, this is hard. I might hurt some of y'all's feelings, but, but y'all look around. What level of communication are you operating on? Do you have great relationships? Do you love your job, your colleagues? Do you love the house you live in and the car you drive? Chances are there are probably some things you'd like to change. 
So let's take a deeper look. The problem is that we've been out of alignment. Not only are we confused about our anatomical moneymaker, among other things, but we're confused about the power of our words. I'm sure you all can remember the old sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me saying. Someone ought to go back to 1894 and thank G.F. Northall for starting that debacle. It's not only so backwards, it actually makes people think that their words have no power, that words have no power. And that just simply isn't true. So to understand the truth about words, I went to the oldest, most credible, timeless book in the world a book full of wisdom and truth that, that guided humanity in relationships, government, and scientific discoveries, just to name a few. And hopefully you even have a copy. That's right, it's the Bible. And I didn't have to search deep within the pages to find the answer. On the very first page, Genesis 1, we learn that words spoken have the power to create. And while God is the only one who can create something from nothing, we can certainly relate. I mean, everything we see in the world today at one time only existed in someone's mind. They had to communicate the figures of their imagination in order to bring them into existence. Some things we communicate in, they remain unseen, like our feelings and our beliefs and even our scientific laws. While they do not exist as a physical substance, we can certainly experience them. I mean, gravity sure will bring you to the ground whether you believe in it or not. <laughs> but that's another topic. Bottom line, words hold tremendous power. Power to create things that are seen and unseen, building up or tearing down. I hear you, you're like, okay, so what? What's What's all that got to do with your career, house, and car? Everything. And fortunately for all of us, that means that all we have to do is learn to communicate on a higher level. Let's go. You're all probably like, but what are the levels? So that's where we're gonna go to my vibe board. And my buddy Myron Golden does this thing where he shows the levels of value creation and it made me realize that each level of value is dependent on your ability to communicate on that level. There's the levels of value, right? And so then we also have the levels of communication that go along with that. Okay, so at the ground level, we call this the implementer. And we can all relate to this uh, because this is the part where we're like learning that skill. So. The skill for me in the beginning was do, the ability to do hair, right? And then when I went into science, it was like the ability to like do experiments, right? And, and then there was this part of like thinking where, yeah, where we had to learn how to think. I know that's crazy, right? Anyway, so in the implementer status, what are we doing? We are trading our time for money. We're using our muscle, our physical skill set in exchange, right? So at this level, when we consider, when we think about communication, at this level, what are the skills that we need to master in order to be able to go up to the next level? At the ground level, you're, while you're in this implementer status where you use your muscle in exchange for money, on this level, you have to master self-communication. So put that here. So here, while you're down here, you've got to master self. So self-communication, that's that internal dialogue that you're having. So how you communicate with yourself will determine whether or not you'll even reach for that next level. See, we make decisions based on our set of beliefs and values. If you want to learn more about how we make decisions, you can study Bayesian analytics or Bayesian decision-making theory. But basically, we make decisions based on the weight we assign to both. If we have a strong belief in an undesirable outcome, which we attach to a strong value, let's say a belief in parachute failure and a value of life, then maybe we don't jump. <laughs> but if we have a strong belief in a desirable outcome, 
and we attach a strong value, let's say belief that the parachute will function properly and the value of exhilarating experiences, then maybe you do jump. In our day-to-day -day lives, consider asking for a promotion. If your belief and your value of not getting the promotion outweighs your belief and value of getting it, then you won't even go for it. And that's why we use the term self-limiting beliefs, right? We're limited by our belief system and that is our internal communication, right? Anyway, that's just something to consider while you're on this ground floor. You gotta master your internal dialogue. And I'll talk more about specific issues in other videos. But on the next level, we have our unifiers. Excuse me, I need to start. Yeah, okay, we have our unifiers. Okay, so the unifiers, hmm, that implies what? That this next level of value, like, what do we gotta do? See, these guys make more money because they are using their communication to unify. Get it? Unification can refer to uniting people like managers overseeing a certain set of staff but it also includes those that can unify ideas and concepts. I'd say that like teachers, perhaps like community college level professors, they might be operating on this level too, along with you know, the managers and, and team leads. At this level, what do you need to master? Just over here. At this level, what you should master are the communication skills associated with management and negotiation. So let's put that here. And negotiation. Okay. So if it's management and negotiation, see another thing that like I think we get confused is the term uh, leader or leadership and versus like manager and management. See leadership implies um, this ability to get people to want to follow us. But management skills are part of being a good leader. So I'll, again, I'll talk more about these, each of these individual types of things in videos that are coming up, but I just want to walk you through like the process for now. So on the next level, we have our great communicators. We have our great communicators. Now these guys are really excellent at communicating concepts, often across disciplines or different areas of expertise. At this level, you have to master the ability to sell an idea or a concept. You're already kind of working on that down here, but this is really, that's really a skill that gets you to that third level. These guys are great at conveying complex messages to diverse audiences. They've mastered the ability to break things down into simple, easily understandable language in a way that builds rapport and trust rather than like, you know, talking down to someone. Like that doesn't that doesn't build that way. So this at this level, we're working on which skill? We are working on the skill of selling, right? Along with everything below that, right? Okay, so who is at the top? We only get, we get four, we got four steps. So this is our last step. So at this highest level, this is where we have our visionaries. Our, our innovators. These guys combine their imagination with their communication. These are the people that have mastered all of these communication skills below from each of, the, each of these lower levels. And they use them to convey the innovative visions of their own minds to others that can help you know, bring those visions to life. So I would say the difference kind of between these two is that at the, on the great communicator level, these guys are conveying other people's messages, other people's visions, where when you get to this visionary status um, or level, visionary level, at that level, that's where you're communicating your own unique ideas to 
you know, bring them to life, right? So now you can see that your mouth is your money maker. And so if you watch Myron Golden's video on his values, check his video out. He goes more into like uh, how, um, like what amount of money is kind of like associated with each one. I guess what Myron pointed out to me was that each level being associated with an income range, you know, based on the level of value that you're creating, climbing the ladder doesn't require more degrees. It requires more and better communication skills. So let's wrap this up. Your money maker. It is not something you shake. <laughs> it is your mouth which you use to communicate. The more communication skills you develop and the more you use them in alignment with your goals, as in like your personal goals, your relationship goals, and your career goals, the more valuable you become and the more your life will start looking like the life you always wanted. Remember, your mouth is only one of the tools used for communication. Let's at least make sure that we're using it to inspire others. To learn more about communication that inspires, join me for our next Make More Wins Challenge, where you'll get the scoop on how you can leverage your greatest assets, including your moneymaker, to start living life by your own inspired design. And if this message blessed you, which hopefully it did, be sure to do all that youtube -y stuff. You know, like, subscribe. You can even drop me a note in the comments. And hey, I personally read those. Oh, and if you know of someone that needs to hear this, feel free to share and tell me you did so that I can thank you for spreading the light and sharing the love. Uh, references and links are gonna be in the description box below. Stay blessed and thank you for using communication that inspires.